Well, good afternoon or late good morning to all of you here. It is a Friday, so if, uh, if we're this late, then you know that uh, it's been quite a week. So uh, we've had a lot going on here at St. Philip. So this is coming to you really, really late uh, in the week. And I'm gonna silence my phone there so it doesn't keep on clicking for us. So, um, so it's really late in the week, it's Friday. Um, just a couple of quick things uh, to draw to your attention. Uh, number one, uh, this Sunday, uh, we have a brand new class that we're starting. It's our winter program. It's on the Disciple Peter. It's a nice, easy class. It's not going to be deep thinking, but it's a great opportunity for us to kind of learn about Peter just in a vacuum. No other stories distracting us. No other things that we're going to be looking at. We're going to look at all the stories that Peter appears in and the way in which Peter serves as a very faithful but also sometimes a reluctant disciple. And I think that really describes a lot of us as well. So uh, going to be a wonderful class. I'm teaching all seven sessions of that uh, throughout this winter through January and February. Even if you've never been in a small group before, this is a great opportunity to come in because there's no homework, number one. There's no pressure either. It's just a great opportunity to come, have refreshments, meet some people, do a little bit of light learning and just kind of move through the winter months that way. The other thing I wanted to draw your attention to is the fact that um, on Sunday after the second service is the 100th anniversary party for one of our longtime members, uh, Vic Brick. Uh, Vic has an incredible story escaping the German Blitzkrieg uh, in Poland when he was young, uh, coming here to the United States and uh, just building a wonderful life and a great life with us here at St. Phillips as well. So um, come out, celebrate with him. There is in the email that will go out to the congregation that this week in St. Phillips, a link that you can click to sign up to come. Even if you don't know whether or not you're gonna come, I think there's gonna be plenty of food anyway. Just come, we'd love to have you. It'll be a great celebration. Then the other thing I need to draw your attention to is something that I just sent out on an email just not too long ago. It is um, the a sign up donation um, kind of thing that you can be a part of. Uh, we, whether you know it or not, we sponsor two refugee families uh, here in the greater Wilmington area. I think they both now live in Newark. The Hamodas just moved to Newark. Their kids had to change schools in the middle of the year, and so they have all kinds of supplies that they are needing as they get into their classrooms. We want to have those supplies for those kids for Monday morning, or for Tuesday morning. They're off on Monday for the Martin Luther King holiday. So when they go back on Tuesday morning, we wanna have those donations to them. So there's gonna be a bin in the Narthex this weekend for all the donations for the Hamoda kids. Uh, the list just went out by email. Please sign up, please, please, please. And if you do it now, actually, you can order from Amazon and I bet it'll be here on time because I signed up for some things um, and they're gonna be here by Sunday. So I won't have them for Sunday at worship probably, but they'll, I'll probably be able to bring them in for Monday morning. So uh, we'll be able to get them to the kids and they'll be all set. If you have questions about that, call me, uh, email me, and I can help you out with it. Uh, so on to our study, which is the shorter part of what I'm doing today. Um, you're gonna notice Pastor John is not here. He's away this weekend, so he won't be with us for worship either. Uh, and he's, because we did this so late this week, He's not with us for this either. So we're going to go back to the gospel text from last Sunday. It's Matthew 3, 13 to 17, which is the story of the baptism of Jesus. So here we go. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented Jesus saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So you can go back and listen to my sermon from Sunday for um, kind of a, a discussion of baptism, uh, particularly as it relates to John kind of saying, I should be baptized by you, um, and how I really drew that into the way in which Jesus being baptized is really another sign that Jesus 
really kind of joins himself to us uh, in his baptism and in our baptism as well. But I made an offhanded comment at one point in my sermon. It was toward the end where Jesus would go off into the wilderness. Right after this story, Jesus goes off into the wilderness and he is uh, tested by the devil. And uh, one of the things that I offhandedly said in my sermon, and I've preached about this at other times, is that that testing by Jesus in the wilderness was really kind of the tempter or Satan kind of tempting Jesus to not believe what God said was true in his baptism. And I think that's true for us as well. The temptation throughout our life is constantly for us to believe that what God said to us in our baptism, that we are beloved by God, that with God, he is well pleased with us. And, and it was funny because I preached that uh, quickly, uh, that little line, it was a throwaway line for me this time around on Sunday. Um, I've preached on it more in depth than other times, but I use it as a throwaway line this time. But it was amazing how my week played itself out so that I really began to question that. And the way I began to question my own baptism was I, I had a week this week where it seemed like each day things got progressively worse. And Wednesday seemed to be the culmination of that. Um, uh, just the whole day, nothing worked out right. And I began to ask myself, my gosh, am I being punished for something? Did I just do something? And, and I never, you know me, you know I never think like that. But whether it was something at home, here at church, it just kept getting worse, and it culminated right into Thursday night. Last night, uh, if you got the email today, um, you got the email last night that Nelson Murray died. Um, just one thing after another seemed to be going wrong this week. And, and I really did say to myself, gosh, what did I do? Am I being punished for something? And I never think like that. I think that's how it happens. Usually we can bear one thing, but when we are bearing many things, we begin to ask ourselves, is there something we've done? Is there some way in which God is not pleased with me? See how that comes out? This is why our baptism is so important. It's why on Sunday we do not only a recognition of Jesus' baptism, but a remembrance of our own baptism. Because in that remembrance, we're trying to provide just that constant reminder that God forgives, that God loves, that God has mercy for us, that God does dwell with us in these times when we need it most. And we need that reminder. We need it every single Sunday. It's why we join together in worship as people of faith. Um, it's why sometimes if all you can do is screens, that's fine, but it's why even screens lack. Because... We come together as church to remind one another that just as Christ dwells with us, that this church, this body of Christ manifested in the world, that we dwell with each other as well through those difficult weeks and those difficult times. So when God says to Jesus, this is my child, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased, that's a promise for you as well. And it's not just a throwaway line but it's actually the core of what the gospel is. So let us pray. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, remind us always that you are washing us in the waters of our baptism each day. That our baptism is to be a reminder each day that because we are baptized, we are forgiven, we are made new by you, and that you keep us close to your heart at all moments particularly when we need you most. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Busy weekend. I hope I see you. Um, looking forward to it. The uh, whole show is mine because I have, to see, I have to fly alone this weekend. So, John, we miss you, and we'll see you uh, when you get back.
See everyone. Bye-bye now.